Hi everyone, this is Anna Lisa. Welcome back. Today's video is a double bloom, double feature. I enjoyed doing this double bloom technique that I knew I had to try it out several times with different color combinations. So stay tuned after this first pour so that you can see the second double bloom. Every year, our local nonprofit art council does a member showcase, fun with 5x7. All of the members make small 5x7 works of art, and the exhibit stays up through November and December for, the, for holiday shopping. I was so surprised the first time we participated because, oh my goodness, you would not believe how amazing some of the tiny pieces of art that were entered were. And I went and I looked at this year's exhibit and was completely blown away by several this year as well. Last year was actually the very first time I displayed my art locally. I It took a lot of courage to, for me to finally make the step or take the step to display my art and I was so glad that I did. Um, it was the first time that I actually put myself out there and it was so much fun getting everybody's feedback. So when I decided that I was going to participate again this year, I preemptively ordered um, several 5x7 cradled wood panels several months in advance for this project um, because I have gravitated away from uh, regular traditional canvases and I wanted to make sure that I had what I needed for when I was ready. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't factor in that um, the first thing that I would do would be to lose the panels for several weeks and um, one of them actually ended up not getting done in time, but that's beside the point. I actually <laughs> I had a lot of fun making these. So one important thing to note about making these double blooms is the amount of paint you start off with on your canvas is extremely important. If you put on too much, you will have both blooms slide completely off of your painting and you'll be stuck trying to do it again. So when I did it, I made sure that I could hit the edges of my canvas with the paint that I had, but I didn't want there to be a whole lot of movement beyond that. It, looking at it, it actually looks like there is more paint on the canvas than there actually was. I really worked hard to make sure that I did not overdo it, especially in the middle because the middle can be the area that gets the most, especially when you're using the small blower to um, to move your paint around. Sometimes it can move it more into the middle and you totally miss that until you start spinning it and it moves all of your paint. Um, I had started these and with the idea that I really wanted them to look like flowers. And so I um, I find that if you go in and you find the natural petal areas, uh, when you use the small blower, that it's really easy to see where like there's some natural petals that you can create. And so I just went in with my embossing tool and added in my petals and I only took them to the middle and um, then at the end, of course, you can uh, swirl around in the middle just to make it so that um, you don't have stark lines dead center in the middle. But if you're really careful, a lot of times you can get by with not needing to make the swirl. I always need to make the swirl for some reason. I um, So when 
I was um, finished uh, forming the petals. I wanted to still add the little points or the tips to each petal, so I spun it out a little bit just to make it so that um, I had a little bit more of an idea of where everything was going to sit because I knew that I was going to lose some of my flower off to the side. I just wasn't sure how much. And so I just wanted a good idea of how um, how wide I needed to make, uh, <laughs> make those. And I almost lost it on that. There's a reason I almost never pour on a clean spinner. And that's actually why. Um, you'll see in the next one, my spinner was actually... <laughs> I waited until it was nice and covered before I attempted to do a, my second 5x7. Um, for some reason, it always seems like the smaller canvases go flying easier. Is that just me? I don't know. It definitely seems to me like they always go flying if the spinner is too clean. Um, and just so you guys are aware, I do cut out a large majority of my spins. Um, and I speed up some areas so I don't want you guys to think that I am spinning my canvases really hard when I'm uh, when I'm showing you the techniques that I'm doing so this was the end of my first one and I really really liked it I actually like this one a lot better than I like the second one but I think that has more to do with the fact that I really like pink and this one was very pink. Um, here it is. You can see it completed and it, I got it all ready for the fun with 5x7 show. This was the one that I actually made it through. So this one, I had just got in my TLP stuck up pigs and I wanted to test it out. So my double bloom seemed like a perfect place to start. I started with an interference color. Um, so I did interference blue. And I, um, I actually ended up doing all like dual tone colors with this particular uh, double bloom and it made it really interesting especially when I was looking and realized that my violet rose my color violet rose actually almost seemed to have more of a color shift than my stuck up pigs I th think you can probably see it where um, it's very clear that there is a dual tone there um, it shifts from purple to blue in different lights. And then on top of my Violet Rose, I added my Stuck Up Pigs uh, Pretentious. And that ended up being such a fun combination. And then just because I really wanted to cinch in that color shift, I added Shy Rose. It's from the Dragonfly set, and I, it's, it's one of my favorites. I, um, I really enjoy the color shift that it does. So with this one, something that I noticed when I, as I was actually blowing this bloom out was that I had too much paint in the middle of my canvas. I didn't put my um, my little puddles of paint in far enough and that really kind of messed me up when it came time to blow out my blooms and then spin them out. So I had it was a little less controllable than my first try and that was really kind of a bummer. 
uh, I, I wish that I'd have paid a little bit closer attention to my placement as well as the amount of pillow paint that I had put on my canvas before I started. Um, I don't know if you noticed, but the edges of my canvas, I like I made sure the paint was actually touching the edges on this one, whereas on the previous one, I just had it close to the edges, not actually touching because I just wanted to make sure I had enough. Um, so I don't know if I mentioned it in the previous blowout, um, but I am using in orange world's smallest blower um, I will put a link in the description of the one that I use uh, but the most important thing if you're gonna buy one is to make sure you do not buy a battery powered one um, I have heard from multiple people that the green ones are not the same they are they lose power and so I just want to make sure that I mention that if you decide to buy one of the um, small blowers, uh, please make sure to buy the orange corded one. Um, the one that I use, I think is, uh, it runs about $15 on Amazon. So if it's over $15, look around um, because they do average about fifteen dollars so if the one that i have the link to is higher uh look further um because somebody had obviously changed the price so with these ones i also didn't do my um my flower petals in the same way and that ended up being a problem as well I feel like my uh, my flowers didn't end up as pretty in this spin and um, I think that was probably why is I didn't start off defining my petals right off the bat I kind of did some swirls thinking that I could do it later and then I also added my points to my petals um, before spinning any of it out, I like to point out the things that I noticed that I maybe could have done differently because I hope that you guys maybe get some good information about um, what I feel I did right and what I feel that I didn't do right because um, maybe it'll help you um, on your pouring journey. I also kind of wish that I hadn't have done that last swoop in the middle. It, it came out a little strange, but it ultimately did still have a pretty outcome. It just took a little bit more um, for me to be happy with it in the end. Um, and it was one of the pours where I looked at it at the end and I wasn't entirely sure how much I liked it until it was dry and then once it was dry I was super glad that I didn't scrape it sometimes I find that it's actually really helpful if you are kind of on the fence about a pour um, especially if you're using this kind of paint uh, we're using a latex base um, paint for your pillow it uh, it's really simple to pour over the top so it never hurts to let one dry if you think there's a possibility you might like it once it is dry so this was it and you can kind of see that purple color shift um, when I move it around in the light and that was such a fun um, Thing. I'm not entirely sure which pigment gave it the most shift on this, but I don't, I don't know. Both of them came out super clear and made it so this whole painting, whenever you move it in the light, it changes. Um, and that is so much fun. 
Uh, so that was my paintings. I hope you enjoyed them. Let me know in the comments which one you liked better. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like. And if you aren't already, please consider subscribing. Thank you. Have a great day.